he was crucified, died, and was buried. After crying out, it is finished, God gave up his spirit. God died. The Son of God died. The Father did not die. The Holy Spirit did not die. But the Son died. And he was taken down from the cross. And he was buried in somebody else's tomb. He didn't get his own. He didn't get the funeral where everybody sang. He didn't have anybody sit around afterwards and tell his story. He was taken down by night, thrown in a tomb. They had to come back later, Easter morning, to try and anoint him because it was done with such haste. This is a humiliating death, even as nice gestures are made within it. Joseph of Arimathea laid aside his own tomb. He saw such a, a gift in the crucified Jesus that he said, no, his death, I wish it would actually be closer to mine because something's going to happen. I think it's going to come undone. This is what Jesus does. He takes a thing and he bears it to its end. And then he makes it different for you. Not different for him, different for you. You don't have a God who simply climbs up the ropes to heaven and says, be like me and you can have like me. You don't have a get rich quick God. You don't have a self-improvement God. You have a goes into your very worst, bears the very worst of the very worst, and it becomes better for you. Jesus did not get any of these things at his burial so that at ours, we can sing hymns about the resurrection. See, God entered into the tomb that the tomb would not become our end, but simply the place where we sleep until the resurrection. We even start to see it in the burial cloths. Jesus, who is wrapped in those fine linens, leaves them folded up, sitting on the tomb, waiting for the next person, waiting for you. The, the burial cloths that God leaves folded up and ready just for you so that when we have to breathe our last, we can go and wear them too. They're the funeral, Paul. They're the white garment that symbolizes baptism that we drape over the casket. The white garment that symbolizes a baptism that we drape over the casket. Because when we look at the casket full of the person that we love, we don't see death anymore. God went into that tomb and he made it something different. The Paul for us is a call to life. It is a call to baptism. For we who are baptized into Christ, we've already been united with him in death. And so we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We can look through death because God has gone through death and pulls us along the way. That means when we confront the grave, we'll go singing hymns about Easter because we know this is not an okay thing. Death is never your friend. It doesn't have to be though. Burial is an awful thing. It is the, the mark of separation of, of me and the people that I love who should still be on this side of the ground. But God went into that ground so that it wouldn't be the same thing for us. He dives in and he makes it better, not for himself, but for you. You pick up the burial cloth. You pick up the Paul, drape it on yourself in the baptism that you already wear, for you are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And here you can have a hope that even those awful, scary things can endure. Because even those awful, scary things, they don't become less scary. But Jesus went into them, made them better, so that we can go into them knowing that they won't be so bad. See, the grave for you, just a time out until the next video, the resurrection. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.